Well, we are getting ready for an interview with uh, Reverend Dr. Chris Christian Jacob, a licensed PhD and psychotherapist. So we trust he will show up shortly. We will ask him to open in prayer and also to not diagnose anybody. You can't do that without meeting them, but more generally, what are the effects of abuse? Uh, what has he witnessed as waiting for him to show up? What has he witnessed in psychotherapy? And just typing a note to him as we await his arrival, we just did and finished video number, was it nine? Let me just check, video eight, psychological traumas in the eighth commandment, God Christian is now arriving. So we trust he will open us in prayer. Christian, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, I would ask, if you would, to open this session in prayer. Certainly. Uh, let us pray. Lord God, in the chaos that is around us, we remember that Jesus slept through the storm. He had peace when there was chaos around him. Mm. Let us, Lord, find your peace. Let us find peace in him, especially when there's a storm of chaos all around us. Let us see the way forward. Lead us, Lord. Lead us to your place of peace. Let us rest in his presence. We ask this in your almighty name. Amen. Amen. As you were praying, I was reminded of Dr. Bruce of Scotland, the professor who had lost a child. And when queried about it, he cited that story from Mark 4 of Jesus being at rest and asleep in the storm and then getting up and calming everything. And what's in, and so the point was Jesus was speaking peace and calmness to Dr. Bruce. And I would add exegetically that at the end of that, per, that pericope on Jesus, that the disciples were more amazed at Jesus than they were what had just happened. Who is this? So the focus brought of what Jesus did brought focus to Jesus's sovereign word. Anyways, uh, did I have your last name right, Jacob? No, that's middle name. <laughs> that's uh, because my... Uh... My family Facebook page is a combination of me, my wife, and my son. And because we use it as a family Facebook, so we've just got our names in there. It, it doesn't matter. I, I, I'm I, not important in this. Um, God's the one that's important in this. And the congregation and those that are hurting for everything that's going on at the moment are the people that are important in this. So anyway, but back to you. Um, my question is not for diagnosing anybody or 
making any charges or allegations. Um, process must go forward. We seek clarification and facts. And as a professional psychotherapist, the question, big question I have, what, and I'm r raising this relative to the sixth commandment, but psychological trauma and injuries, what have you, and this is, I'm not asking you to diagnose people from Emmanuel or elsewhere, to, but what generally are the kind of things that you've witnessed and I'm going to take some notes uh, here, Christian. Okay. The, the first thing to note and be important uh, is oh. that I'm just a psychotherapist. Uh, any diagnosis of people are done by consultant psychiatrists. That's a different, you know, profession. That's a different psychotherapists deal with the um presenting symptoms and what i have specialized in is those that have been hurt through abuse within church settings oh so that's quite a wide scope now <clears throat> i'm going to talk generally today because um whenever there's any um problems within any denomination any church people sadly get hurt people sadly and, get hurt you said yeah sadly people get hurt okay. so it might be um members of a congregation that get hurt and it can be from a a, a very wide range of ways in which they get hurt a lot of the work that i have done is to do with people that have been hurt by abusive members of clergy now there was a very large uh independent inquiry called the independent inquiry into child sex abuse in which i gave evidence which um was one of the biggest public inquiries um ever held by the UK government. It was a UK government home office inquiry. It was a statutory inquiry. And it looked at the, um, within the Anglican inquiry, it looked at um, uh, abuse and how it had been dealt with and the effects of that abuse. Now, on top of that, there was extensive research, again done by the ICSA team, that looked at the results of the effects of abuse within a church setting. And there's quite a lot of differences between abuse that happens in other settings and within a church setting because of the spiritual dimension and the religious dimension. So, and I'm not talking about any specifics here. Let that be clear. If you have a let me let me uh, see where work. this let me interrupt and see where this is going, where someone is abused sexually or otherwise, some may raise the question, where is God in all of this, which might intensify the issue? But I but back to you, Christian. Yes, one of the um aspects of um religious and spiritual abuse is disillusionment with religion and it, it can drive people away from faith but on the other hand you then get some people that use the faith as a coping mechanism to deal with the abuse so you can have quite a wide range of reactions to abuse from uh there was a lot of study with regards to a former convicted um, uh, sociopathic uh, bishop called Bishop Ball. And okay. there was a whole study on him and um, how people felt. And we're not just talking about people that were sexually abused, 
yeah, we're talking about people that just felt let down and things like that. Um, so, what's his name, uh, Bishop? Peter Ball. B A double L. B A double L. Okay. Yeah. Now, if anybody wanted to look up the um, results of the inquiry and the psychological inquiry, the independent inquiry into child sex abuse has got a website called ix.org.uk. How do you, how do you, slow down, slow down. What is it? ICSA, that's I I C S A C C S A. Yeah. Dot org dot UK. And so that's uh, I I C S A dot org dot UK. Correct. And the results of all the research, which is probably the some of the largest research that's been done into church-related abuse, is published there. So, talking generally now, people that are abused, that can be emotional abuse, spiritual abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse. There's a wide range of abuse from people that realistically, at the end of the day, are not good and proper suitable people to be holding the post of either ordained minister or a bishop. Or back up, the, back, you know, up in between. back up a bit. Um, you mentioned spiritual, emotional, <laughs> as well as sexual abuse. Now, what's this with about ministers? Well, abuse comes in many formats. Um, one of the traits that was um, detected by ICSA was a high prevalence of people within ordained ministry that have what is commonly known as um, sociopathy. Whoa. In but the ministry? In ministry. It, it, there's oh. a high prevalence of sociopathy within the, you know, people within ministry. The correct term for it now is actually an antisocial personality disorder. Yeah. So that... th th that's what, you know, um, a lot of people within the oh. uh, psychotherapeutic community. Now, common um, signs of sociopathy or an antisocial personality disorder is, and I kind of go through the very common ones. First of all, ignoring right and wrong. That's, you know, telling lies to take advantage of other people. Very big trait is not being sensitive or respectful to others. You then get people using wit and charm, especially as Bishop Ball did, um, for personal gain or pleasure. Having a sense of superiority um, or being extremely opinionated. Being hostile, aggressive, threatening towards other people. I'm typing as fast as I can, Christian. Sorry, you can listen back to it. But this is a huge one. Feeling no guilt about harming others. Well, you know. And as a result. I just, of I just raised that issue in the last video. The, the question of the psychological trauma in a certain case under review. And that's the question I got. Hurting people. And any signs of remorse. The problem is, is because they have no guilt about harming others, a pattern of behaviour will emerge of people coming along to that person in a position of power, there being a, 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 pers a problem between them, and them taking extreme actions like getting rid of them, and you will find a, a pattern of behaviour repeating itself. 
and they are always right and they're very feel superior no feeling of guilt and they're quite threatening and hostile towards other people now somebody that's not a can sociopath I, can i enter uh yes so in looking at sociopathy in a bishop or minister we're not looking at a one-off but we're looking at a pattern we're looking at a repeated pattern of behavior i got you everybody has a bad day you, you know yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean goodness yeah. gracious <laughs> there's probably people that you've wanted to tell to you know go do something and you've <laughs> resisted it that that doesn't mean to say you're a sociopath we what we're talking it. about is repeated um uh, re repeated and significant patterns of behavior that will keep repeating itself. Okay. Now, that's on the one side. On the other side, the people that receive this treatment, because there's two sides to every story, the person that's being abusive and the person that's being abused. The, apart from the effect on their religious and spiritual belief, which can be get them to doubt God, get them to doubt whether God exists. They can have questions like, well, if God's the almighty God that is all seeing and all knowing, why is that God allowing these things to happen to me? Yeah. But there's also a, 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 a longer um, play out of beliefs of people especially when socio sociopaths they play very carefully on getting people to doubt themselves they try and pass the blame onto them so that they believe that the fault is theirs now this happens very often within both physical and sexual abuse where they use the bible this we're talking about specifically now in religious settings they use the Bible to justify the abuse. So they might, for instance, take out of context um, parts of uh, Proverbs, you know, in children, spare the rod, spoil the child, and they will use that to justify their own sexually perverted desires. But going forward, any of the abuse leads to huge problems with emotional will well-being of the person that's been abused mental health um internalizing those behaviors it can lead to um traumatic ptsd and the symptoms of that bad sleep patterns um you, you know panic attacks depression um emotional distress flashbacks that uh, there's people that i know no names no pack drills that literally because of their abuse, they can literally see someone in a dog collar and that can be an instant flashback for them and they can feel um, emotional distress. But then to a higher level, there's levels underneath of patterns behaviour <coughs> that abusive clergy um, have on people that have been abused especially with younger people, lower educational development skills, higher unemployment, uh, financial insecurity, homelessness, self-harming, uh, physical injuries, poor BMI, um, because they don't look after themselves. They want to make themselves look dirty and horrible so they're not attracted to other people. Um, medical problems, substance abuse. Um, These are know, the some potential effect yes and, and, and the the actual effect of abuse by clergy again this was from the ICSA study what most people don't realize i'm talking about those sexually abused now those sexually abused by clergy have the highest rate of suicide of any sector of people abused whoa now, there's another thing to bring into this. 
And that is, they looked extensively at all professions and where there was a prevalence of people that being sexually abused. Um, and th they looked at teachers, youth workers, ministers of religion. Are you aware that per thousand people employed, so we're talking about on a pro rata basis, priests have the highest rate of convictions for child sex abuse of any profession. Shocking. Yeah, I didn't know that. Higher, higher than teachers, higher than you know, youth workers, higher than any on a pro rata basis. Now, the important thing is is that people that have been hurt within a church setting, if they feel that it's affecting them, they need to talk to somebody. They need to talk to a pastor that they trust. But one of the things that can happen is it destroys their trust in anybody with a dog collar or anybody to do a church. So there needs to be places such as in the UK, the Samaritans, where people could just pick up the phone and talk to people. What is that about Samaritans? Um, the, the Samaritans is uh, um, a 24-hour number, um, which is, uh, I can look up number, I don't cut off the top of my head, that's in the UK. Um, it's a number where people can get, if they're feeling that their experience of church and that if somebody within a church setting has emotionally, physically, mentally, verbally, or at the extreme end, sexually abused them. People might think, oh, he was only a verbally abusive to me. That's not as bad as other things. It can be. Different people get triggered by different effects. And a a priest or a um, a member of clergy being abusive to members of the congregation. I'm not going to say which one, but I've seen a video recently which I just thought, this is so abusive. This is going to hurt people. People are going to be hurting. Those people that are hurting need to know, speak to somebody. There are people that will happily talk it through with you. It's well, not there, your fault. There will be people listening to this, and I have included in the show notes a reference to your therapeutic site for financial support. Uh, so that's in there. Now, if I can be a little more specific, if you could respond, would you expect this to, with effects on Mr. Murphy and the Emanuel people, adverse effects? I, 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 I can tell you bluntly that um, I've already spoken to yesterday half a dozen people that were directly affected by what's going on with Emmanuel. Okay. Uh, and um, there is a wide range of feelings and emotions going on, all of which are having a negative effect on members within the Emmanuel family. Luckily, the Emmanuel family is really supporting itself. It, uh, uh, within the congregation at the church. But what we need to remember, there's an awful lot of people that watch online services. I'm not just talking about Emmanuel, I'm talking about wide range. And when you have anybody that has a, I, I'm thinking now to, um, uh, oh, what was the one that recently? Um, uh, uh, there was recently a, a, a case in uh, um, St. Albans, uh, diocese with an evangelical church that <coughs> whose uh, minister Mike 
was found guilty of serious, you know, um, offences that included matters of a sexual nature. He's been dismissed from the church, but the um, the church was less devastated, and a lot of people were left de devastated that they felt so let down by the church, and <clears throat> the Church of England had so much that they had to employ a team of people to deal with the psychological um, effects of people affected by um, Soul Survivor was the name of the church. <clears throat> now, likewise, in, in other instances, when, when there's a bishop that is, um, you know, uh, like Bishop Ball, that is found guilty. He's come. A lot of people came forward and said how hurt they were by, um, and a lot of people didn't want to speak up. So in any case, there's people that have been previously hurt that until it went public, they kept it inside, wow. and it kept eating them inside. And then when things come public, all these people come forward, and they all say, "Well, actually." I had a problem very similar. Yes. Now, whether it's a member of clergy that's had similar problems or it's a member of uh, a congregation that has had similar problems, they are all people that are hurting. So does it help for there to be a public response to uh, confirm and validate their sense of injury? I do. And I think it's very important for people to know that even though your experience, your negative experience may in your view be quite small, don't underestimate the psychological trauma that could have been caused. And you might be keeping it inside. I'm reminded of 1 Corinthians 6. 19 um which says know that your body is the temple of the holy ghost i'm sorry there's many versions of, you know um you know <coughs> which ye have from god and that you are not your body and your soul is not of your own we talk about our body being a temple but the passage actually refers to our body being a temple of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. And our mind is as much as part of our body as our legs or our heart or our arms. <coughs> and you need to look after the whole of you as a person, not just your physical health, but your mental health as well. Um, I know you previously talked about uh, Acts 20, 28 to 31. Um, I think I got that right, isn't it? Acts 20, yes. yeah, 28 to 31, isn't it? Prosceta <laughs> el tus e tus poimenus, speaking to the bishops of Ephesus to beware, prosceta. It's a present active imperative that Paul is commanding the bishops, and the word is bishop, episcopat, poi in the context. Take heed to yourselves, your inner self, your whole thing, and take heed to the flock, the, the flock That's of the Christ. Best. And then it goes on and say, because there's lupoi, savage wolves that will arise within you. So this present active imperative means do it now, but keep on doing it. It's an enduring duty of bishops, or which I view as elders or presbyters, with the bishop being the primus inter pares, the uh, one among equals among presbyters on a two-order view, that they are to be constantly and vigilantly taking care of themselves, but the flock, they're flock-oriented. 
And will the, the, will, the, will the so, sociopath be block oriented or self oriented in egocentricity? Totally self interested. Uh, he, he, he won't even have a consideration for um, his flock. And it's that basis that people that have got sociopathic tendencies or, you know, sorry, kind of using the old phrase, you know, antisocial personality disorders, yeah? Yeah. Um, people that have got, you know, a personality disorder of that stuff. And they will not be considering their flock and therefore their flock will be left for the wolves. Now, a question I have is, do sociopaths who give offense as they age tend to become more and more isolated? <clears throat> or people get the word well, that something that would, it just isn't right that about this To say that would be too great of a generalization. Okay. You, you know, um, I'm sorry if I can't answer that, but that's that that would be too generalized. Uh, it's a lot more complicated than that. And different people, different sociopaths, and different people that, that that's why therapy of any form of clergy abuse needs to be person centered, it needs to be centered around the individual person that's been hurt. Okay, and quite often, just the ability. To sit down and talk to somebody about how this priest, how this bishop, how this person has hurt you and the feelings that you've got and exploring those feelings can be quite a release. Yeah, it, it, it can. And then with helpful suggestions from a psychotherapist that can move it, move things on so that you can then actually realize that. No, it's not God. This was down to the abuser. This is not you. This is not of your doing. This is of their doing. So is there a tendency for maybe a victim of abuse to think maybe they are somehow complicit to that? Yes, but also what will quite often happen is that the abusers will try and blame the whole flock. They will go and do a sermon saying, you are evil, you are all evil, you have to repent, this is your fault. They're not evil. It's not their fault. This is very clearly nothing to do with them. And if anybody tells you, How could you know, how as a whole say, that you're evil just laugh how could a bishop say go in and accuse the congregation of being evil i mean we're talking <laughs> total remorselessness and willingness to charge people without canonical adjudication and total lack of sympathy for the congregation I, I, that, that explodes my mind because i don't get it well, I don't get it. But imagine you've got a congregation that for whatever reason, not talking specifics now, is already hurting. Maybe, for instance, just they've lost their pastor. They're already hurting. They've already got uncertainty about what's going to happen to their church, to their faith, to their pastor. And then you get somebody coming in telling you that you're evil imagine the psychological because that's implying you have lost you have caused the loss of your pastor this is down to you you as a congregation are evil you know and that at a, a subconscious level can do real damage this is not what the Bible says, this is not how pastors, vicars, reverends, rectors, presbyters, anybody of any leadership should be acting. But 
It is patterns of behavior that we see time and time and time again in uh, lessons learned reviews, in, you know, in inquiries into child sex reviews, into... We, we've seen this pattern of behavior happen so often that it saddens me. It really saddens me. Mainly because of the fact that there's a lot of people then have to pick up the pieces of the people that are seriously hurt. And a lot of people take their own lives because of this kind of abuse within a church. And that's not good. And to be quite honest, <laughs> dealing with this kind of abuse, the church doesn't want to admit to it. The church doesn't want to say, oh, there's a lot of people hurting. It's kind of the, it's like <laughs> somebody's got to clean the sewers. Nobody wants anybody to do it. Nobody wants to admit. It's the dirty work. It's the work that nobody even wants to talk about. But it's the reality of the hurt that's caused by ungodly people that should never have been shepherds of God's sheep. Which includes sociopaths in ministry. Yes. They should not be ministers or bishops. And you noted that there's a higher prevalence of sociopaths in the clergy than other professions, which is new to me. There's an awful lot of professions that... Um, they will do what they call personality profiling, which is purely um, uh, somebody goes down onto a computer and they ask a lot of questions. And quite accurately, they can detect these tests can detect these personality traits and these personality problems. And companies and churches and um, can then use those. Um, personality tests to stop people that are sociopaths the sociopathic tendencies from entering ministers ministry but sadly that's very very rarely I know of very few to, I, I know two denominations that are doing it but none of those are the big ones and people tend to rely upon Oh, Jack's a good guy. He was in the choir. Um, he, he was a server. Um, let's send him. He knows how to do things, and he fits in with us. Let, let's send him off to seminary to be a priest. Too often it's about who people are, um, not what they are as people, as to who gets chosen to be a uh, you know, ordained in the church rather than who God is choosing to be, shepherds of God. I don't think there's enough discernment of calling is what I'm saying. Gotcha. Well, brother, we've been, gone has, almost has it been four, any okay, interest? Has it been interesting for you? Pardon? Has this been interesting for you? It indeed has, and I'm going to have... We're probably going to get... We're probably going to get no views on this at all, you know. Oh, I don't think so. I mean, we're talking about some serious issues here, psychological injuries. And for me, as I've brought up the sixth commandment, which is larger than just simply homicide. It has to do with <coughs> injuries and mean words and verbal abuse and emotional abuse, and the duty to avoid anything along those lines, but to speak peaceably and comfortably and and wisely, honoring the duties of the ninth and fifth commandments. So I just opened up the angle this morning on the sixth commandment, and this dovetails into that extremely well. So we'll see. But brother, the, we've gone- The thing that's a problem, it is that you will find people, I'm talking like about Bishop Paul, that people were, there's been a recent case in the news 
um, at Blackburn Cathedral about a person in which they were complaint after complaint after complaint, but they were single complaints and it was never put together. Um, with Bishop Ball, there was complaint after complaint after complaint. It was only when he was yeah. arrested that suddenly the floodgates opened. Now you find that in any denomination where there's one person that's had single, 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 single complaint against them, that when it becomes public and when it goes into the public domain, suddenly the floodgates open. And then sadly, it's a question as to whether there is the resources available to give the people that are hurting the support that they need. So, um, and I think more ministers need to be just mindful of the hurt. Yes. And the, the other dimensions which, which make church based abuse of any sort a lot worse than non church based because well, of the the additional dimensions to it. Well, you know, when St. Paul was arrested on the road to Damascus, and you study that whole scenario, we find that it was not just the saints, the elect and justified saints who were being kicked and injured, but they were kicking and injuring Jesus himself because yes. the Holy Spirit dwells in the body, the temple of the body, as you noted. So it's not just an offense against the the individual or corporate believers, but it's an offense against the God himself of those believers. Now, we've gone to 57, uh, 45 minutes here, so we should draw it to a close, yeah. Christian. I, I do, can, can I let you finish in prayer for us? Yes, but I would like to, before I pray, um, offer this invitation to anybody who is willing to talk on the record to me about the injuries they have received and to speak the truth and only the truth and gently, factually, openly, sincerely, and as the Ninth Commandment requires to stand for the truth, stand for promoting and preserving it. So I offer that invitation to any and all um, you know, Christian, you can refer some of those members of Morcam to me if they want to do that. They may not want to, uh, but the floodgates may be opening here. But having said that, let us, uh, the Lord be with you. And with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us this day with thy mighty power. We pause to pray for Reverend Murphy, his family, the members of Morcam who may have been injured, appears to have been injured. And also remember Mr. Fennec and bring him before you, O Lord. Defend us from the dangers of this day by your mighty power. And grant that we fall into no sin nor any other kind of danger. That all of our doings and meditations and thoughts in the temple of the Holy Ghost, our body and, and mind, may be doing things and thinking things that are acceptable in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Whom with thee and the Holy Ghost we magnify and extol as the one true and living God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for your professional expertise and experience. You are an enriching interlocutor. Last thing to, if, if anybody is in any way affected by anything that's been said 
with regards to this whole matter, please seek help. Don't keep it within. Speak to somebody. If you trust the pastor, trust your local pastor. If you don't, there are, um, within the UK, there are numerous helplines available. NAPAC, National Association of uh, Survivors of Child Abuse. Um, there's numerous organisations that we can direct you to if need be. If you're out in Asia, then happily speak to us. Um, we are absolutely snowed under at the moment, though. This <laughs> seems to have triggered off a huge response of people that can relate to what is going on. And we have, in addition to that, we have the duty of those who are presbyters and others to defend the flock from any sociopathic behaviors and to deal with it according to the canons and constitutions of your given denomination. To not do anything is to allow the pattern to continue and the cycle must be broken. My two cents. The biggest, the, the single biggest, I go back to it, the single biggest uh, pattern of behavior in a sociopath is disregard for the rules. So even if they've got the rules, they they will think that they don't apply to them, that they can get around them. Yeah. Um, right. God bless. I hope it's been useful. And uh, oh. speak to you soon. Thank you, Dr. Christian. And um, what's your last name? Hernandez. Fernan Hernandez? Uh -uh. Yes. With an H on it. Correct. Okay, gotcha. We'll see you later, brother. Thank you. Take care. I'll, I'll ring you in a bit. Take care. God bless. All right.